Recently, I released a video about 10 animals that are in the UK that shouldn't be. And in the comments, it was full of people saying, you missed this, you didn't include that. Why wasn't this animal included? So here is the second part of that video. Today, I'm gonna to tell you about 10 more animals that are in the UK that shouldn't be here. First up, and starting with a species which despite being non-native, now contributes massively to UK ecosystems, the European rabbit. They're most likely to have been introduced around the Norman conquest in 1066, as there are no known records of them in this country before then. For a long time, rabbits were treated as pests, and during the 1950s, they were targeted with a man-made virus, which is thought to have wiped out 99% of their UK population. Nowadays, they are considered as a keystone species and encouraged in certain places for the habitats that their burrowing and foraging creates. A lot of people know that rabbits are not native, but it may be surprising to hear that their larger cousin, the brown hare, is also not from round here. For a long time it was thought that the Romans brought hares to this country around 100 AD, but recent carbon dating has shown that they were here for as much as 600 years before that. During the period up to the Roman invasion, they may have even been worshipped, with evidence suggesting that they were buried whole, rather than being butchered or eaten. Another species, which is often considered as native but isn't, is the little owl. These starling sized birds were introduced between 1874 and 1880 to a park in Kent, and were first recorded breeding in the wild in 1879. They gradually spread from there, both naturally and as a result of further introductions, and by the 1940s they had colonised much of England and Wales. This spread has continued, and they were first reported as breeding in Scotland in 1958. Unlike many introduced species, which can have a knock-on effect on natives, little owls don't seem to have had much of an impact, either positive or negative, on native species. Next up is an animal which is far from home, and seems to be becoming more common in this country the red-necked wallaby. There have been 202 confirmed records of these marsupials from as far north as Glasgow to the Isle of Wight in the Irish Channel all the way to the south coast near Brighton. This species is native to Australia and Tasmania and is often kept in private and public collections. Many were thought to have been released during the Second World War when their owners had other priorities and some have undoubtedly escaped from poorly built or storm damaged enclosures. As their numbers are still quite low, it isn't clear how, or if, they will impact native species. I really don't know if this one will be a surprise, but yes, there are scorpions living wild in the UK. Yellowtail scorpions have been recorded at a handful of places around the country, but their most numerous population is in a shipyard on the Isle of Sheppey in Kent. These arachnids are around the size of a cricket, and when I recently visited, they seem very docile. Just like other scorpions, they glow when a UV light is shined on them. The UK population is the most northern site for scorpions in the world, and it's estimated that just at the Isle of Sheppey, there may be as many as 15,000 of them. The next animal is one that I didn't know was in the UK until just a few weeks ago, the coati. These small mammals are related to raccoons, and are native to the southern states of the USA and to much of South America. There have been multiple sightings of coatis in the wild in the UK, including a colony that was confirmed as breeding in the Lake District. Most of the other sightings around the country have been identified as pets, and lots of them have subsequently been caught and returned to their owners. Next up is the American Bullfrog. These large amphibians can grow to more than a pound in weight and to over 6 inches in length. They were kept as pets, but irresponsibly released, and from 1995 onwards they were recorded at several sites in England. Although they have been found breeding, there have not been any recent sightings in the wild, and it's hoped that attempts to capture or eradicate them have been successful. You might not think that a frog could pose much of a threat to native animals, but the bullfrog is a ferocious predator, capable of preying on our native amphibians, small rodents, and they'll even take birds. Goldfish have been kept as pets in England for at least 300 years and they've been kept in China for hundreds of years before that. 
They have been selectively bred to be many shapes and colours, but unfortunately, people who keep them often don't realise just how long they can live for and how large they can really get. This has led to unwanted pets being released to hundreds, if not thousands of locations around the country, and in some circumstances, they can be a real issue. Not only do they prey on aquatic insects and compete with native fish for food and space, they can also hybridise with some native species, such as the rare Crusian carp. So far, none of the species on this list, or in the previous video, have been released into the UK countryside on anywhere near the scale of what pheasants have. A staggering 47 million of these birds are released every single year. Most of them seem to fall victim to collisions with cars, some are easy prey for foxes, others are shot for sport or for food, but a small proportion do survive and successfully breed in the wild. These birds are native to Asia, and although there doesn't seem to be much of an appetite for landscape studies on how they affect native species, it's widely accepted that they can compete with birds for food and prey upon native reptiles, amphibians, rodents and birds. The next animal is one of the non-natives that has really ruined things for a native animal. Signal crayfish were first introduced into the UK in the 1970s by the government as an animal to be farmed and exported for food. Unfortunately, not only do they directly compete with the native white claw crayfish, but they also carry crayfish plague, which is fatal to the native animals. They can also prey upon small fish and aquatic invertebrates, and when they burrow into banks, the sediment that they release may create conditions that are not suitable for sensitive native fish to spawn in. Okay, well there's another 10, so that makes 20 animals that are in the UK that shouldn't be here. If you enjoyed this video, check out this other British wildlife video, and if you like that, subscribe for more. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.